Dude, I woke up ready for breakfast. <laughs> ready for it. What are you having? I am having three eggs. One of them is on an ugly end piece of the PSMF bread. And we had a cup of coffee, I'm guessing with butter in it? One and a half tablespoons of butter because I was too lazy to cut the three tablespoons that was left sitting in the thing and leave one tablespoon. Cheers to your day. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things, like recipe videos, and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. I tried so hard not to blink my eyes a lot. <laughs> Somebody in the premiere last night said, is it possible for you to get through the opening without batting your eyes? I, I promise I'm not trying to. You're but making up for me because everybody I, always says Joe never, never blinks. He never blinks. Especially if I'm filming myself. Isn't It's wild, right? <laughs> but I blink a lot, so I'm sorry. I have to say something. Yes. It's getting hard to get paper towels again for some reason. It I don't is. understand it. <laughs> But we're having this like you know Shortage. whole thing when you go to Costco and BJ's, you can buy one paper product. You can either buy paper towels or you can buy toilet paper. But you can't buy both. But I sort of need both. So I also don't like to purchase paper towels. And when I do, I hide them because they're expensive. And we can go through them kind of fast. Oh, actually. yeah. Caleb will clean the kitchen. It's an entire roll. <laughs> and so I'm like, we were using just like kitchen rags to clean the kitchen. But then the problem is, is he wipes up the grease and everything. Now that goes into the wash machine. And you can get- And my already greased up clothes have even more get grease. Get extra grease. So I purchased these. They were actually on sale at BJ's and we've used them before. These things are amazing. Yeah. Because they're stronger than a paper towel. They scrub better than a paper towel. And then you can rinse them, just like wipe up the counter, go over to the sink, run some water, rinse them, and you can reuse them like 20 times. And there's, how many are in here? It's the same as 24 rolls of. Yeah, 72 cloths. They say one pack is like 24 rolls of paper towels. And dude, like seriously, I think that they're right. That is not misleading. A lot of times they're like misleading. They I, are working so well. I did not think they were gonna work. I, I really didn't. I'm just impressed because you're able to, you know, I told Kayla, he was like, well, how many do I need to clean the kitchen? I'm like, take two out if you're comfortable with two, but then when you're done, just rinse them out and just like put them over the stove to dry. And I then the next day amazed. we can reuse them again. Yeah. So I'm really impressed with that. Here I made your coffee to go since you're going. Thank you. These uh, coffee mugs are finally up on the website along with yes, the two new job. colors of the insulated flask. So... Since Cindy is working on our website, I'm trying to clean things up for her to make her job easier because she is giving us a really reasonable rate. Thanks so much for But that. also, she said that like she needs me to not make a whole bunch of changes while she's working on the website. Well, here's like a and whole I'm bunch trying of stuff. To, yeah, I'm trying to like just clean up the store part. So I'm in the process of moving all of our t-shirts to Amazon and I'm about three quarters of the way through. So. That's what I have on the agenda, and I have a Zoom meeting with Dave Feldman at 10 a.m. Have you set an alarm? I have three alarms set so that I do not miss the Zoom meeting because Dave is going to explain some of our cholesterol numbers to us, and then we can show you guys what our blood numbers look like after beef, butter, bacon, and egg. I'm excited about that. Before we go, though, I had to say Purple Lady totally annihilated my turlet paper roll last night because she actually asked when we were in the premiere mm -hmm. how close are we to ten thousand dollars for wounded warriors and we were 400 bucks yep she gave four hundred dollars 
so that thank you so much. the two crazy ketos family will be sending ten thousand whole dollars to the wounded warriors project and i'm gonna start crying just thinking about it again but like that was so incredible and it still blows me away and as i go into staff meeting this morning we usually take time in all of our staff meetings to talk about our wins for the week and mm. let me tell you the two crazy kiddos family once again is such an uh, amazing amazing win because i'm so excited about all the hope that they're bringing for for wounded warriors through the holidays and into next year yeah so on the agenda for today is I'm going to continue working on the computer. I have a bunch of vlogs to, that I need to edit. Um, I need to go to Costco because I forgot what I'm supposed to get at Costco. That's probably a good thing that I don't that I don't remember what we need at Costco. But I need something at Costco. Oh, I have to go redeem our annual rewards for our membership. Oh, okay. So you know they, you get like a coupon that it's like, hey, you can redeem this and. Generally, it's enough to basically renew the membership. Which, which is, is great. More than enough for me. If I get a free Costco membership, I'm happy with that. Yeah, and I have a lot of writing to do mm -hmm. after my meeting this morning. So I, this is kind of a preemptive get fed. Yeah. Enjoy your breakfast. And, and it's interesting because I'm not hungry right now. So and I'm okay. not going to eat just because Rachel's eating breakfast. It's all right. I don't need to eat. And if you get hungry later, you can Yeah, you can I eat. have my chili. I still have a half a bowl of chili left. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. That like, I feel like we're doing good here. And now I am sort of eating because I'm having one and a half tablespoons yes. of butter, but I don't like black coffee. But usually we do not fire up the Blackstone unless it's, <coughs> it's like a meal meal for right. two. The other thing that I want to try today is I was reading some of the instructions or reading some of the recipes yeah. for the Innova Precision Oven. And you're supposed to be able to make hard-boiled eggs in there. So I want to try. It's, we need It's some. probably not faster than putting them in the Instant Pot. But here's the thing. I look at it this way. The Instant Pot... It's I do a five minute quick a five minute cook with a four minute release, and then you got to put it in cold water. But you know when you do a five minute cook, you got to wait for it to get up to temperature. Mm -hmm. So it really is about twelve minutes, and this is supposed to cook a hard boiled egg in like fifteen minutes in the shell. All right. So like not having any water. So it's a sous vide style. Right. So I figured why not try it. I also have some recipe development that I want to work on today because we're trying to come out with some Thanksgiving recipes. So yeah. kind of a busy day, but not a busy day. At least I'm not outside cutting grass this morning. Right. So it's it's just, it's a creative day. Yeah. Okay, we're going to try to make hard-boiled eggs in the Innova Precision Oven. So it says that we're supposed to put it at 212 degrees, 100% humidity. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, but I'm going to start it on the app. So I have the app open. Now we can just search for eggs and then scroll down. Here's hard boiled eggs, open that. And then here you go, preheat the oven. Just press start preheating. And it says to lay the eggs on a perforated pan. So we will go ahead and wait for the oven to preheat and then we'll put them in and try it. According to the recipe, it takes 15 minutes. Excuse me. Yes. My new kitchen shears came from Amazon. These. Where shall we store them so we will lose them immediately? It's not about losing them. It's about using them to cut paper, twine, and any other craft that you may use. Sometimes I can't wait for the thing in the back to for me to cut it out. It itches me. I got to grab whatever I can find. These are kitchen shears. See? They look weird. It looks like you could use them for other things. We could use them to cut fingers off. <laughs> Please not no. Well, they're supposed to cut through bone and cartilage and stuff. So, I'm going to put these in there. Why is that on their like selling points? Well, to be able to Oh, I guess cut, cut me. the chicken bones and stuff like that. So, I came a little too close to home though. We're going to put these in the drawer. And hopefully they don't get misplaced. So I'll put a link for them down below. Uh, I like the fact that they're all stainless steel. Some of them had like plastic handles or wood handles. My problem I find with kitchen shears, when you buy the plastic handles, they break. Right, they crack. You're going to try to cut through bone and then you go like this and then the plastic breaks. So this had some really good ratings online. I think there were like 15,000 like, you know, 
reviews of it. Don't take or our stars, word for it. So hopefully they work really well. So oven's at temperature. It says that if you want a creamy center, you put it to 15 minutes. If you want a traditional hard boiled egg, we're gonna go to 17 minutes. So look at all the steam built up inside of that. Seriously. It's all coming out the bottom. There is a drip tray down here so that the steam doesn't like go all over the counter. All right, so let's go ahead and put it in there. Ooh, look at all that steam. Ooh, I need a facial. So I get to be a part of the inaugural well, at eggs. least putting it in. I feel complete. Okay, they are done. We're gonna go ahead and turn this off. We're gonna open it up. And uh, I forgot to prepare a cold water bath, so I'm gonna go do that real quick. We'll take the eggs, take them out. And then go ahead and put them into this ice bath to stop the cooking process. Let him sit in there for a little while. I'm sitting here waiting for my Zoom call with Dave Feldman so he can explain some of our lab results. Then we can share our lab results with you. And I'm feeling kind of funny, uh, kind of like my electrolytes are low. So I'm gonna try one of these orange salts from Element. I have not tried this flavor at all, but I love orange and that's a flavor that Redmond doesn't have. Uh, so each one of these is a thousand milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium and 60 milligrams of magnesium. And I like these because they are really clean ingredients. Uh, we have a link down below where you can get a free sample pack. Uh, it's eight different packs, so eight different flavors, and you just have to pay five bucks for shipping. So it's a pretty good deal. I'll leave that link down below. So there's 30 in each box. And let's go, we're gonna rip it open. Pour it in. Go ahead and try this. Shake it up. One thing about all these powdered electrolytes, um, I find that they really need a good shake and uh, sometimes it takes a little while for everything to dissolve because they're not adding a bunch of things in there to you know, make it dissolve easier, which is good because they're not adding a whole bunch of extra ingredients. Let's go ahead and try this. That is good. It's got a nice orange flavor to it. Now it is salty, but it's supposed to be. It's got a thousand milligrams of sodium in there. You know, people message us all the time that like, my electrolytes are salty. They should be. If you don't taste your electrolytes, if you're like drinking any kind of electrolyte drink, not just Redmond or Element, but if you're trying anything, and there's absolutely no taste at all, there's not enough electrolytes in there. Your electrolytes should have a salty taste to them because again, you're drinking sodium and potassium. So like we had that one that Anthony and I opened up on the keto box during 11 on 11, it tasted like water. Well, that means there's not enough electrolytes in there and it's not gonna do much for you. So whatever electrolyte brand you buy, make sure it's got a salty taste to it or that you can at least taste the electrolytes, because if you can't, it's worthless. That was an awesome Zoom call with Dave Feldman. I learned so much in the little bit of time we spent together. He is just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to cholesterol. I mean, he's not even a doctor or a health professional, he's a researcher. But for the last six years, he has just devoted his life to researching cholesterol, what the low carb diet does to it, how things react to each other, and I just learned so much. And I'm really encouraged now when I look at our lab results after talking to him, and I know some people are gonna look at our total cholesterol and be like, oh my gosh, like how can you be excited about this? But I'm also looking at all the other numbers in relation to our total cholesterol. And you also have to remember, we both lost fat while we were doing BBBE. That I dropped, according to the in-body scale, nine pounds of body fat. And Rachel had like a recomposition, though she didn't lose any pounds on the scale, her percentage of body fat went down and her percentage of lean muscle went up. And so what that means is your fat cells are shrinking, you're releasing fat because it's gotta go somewhere. And so yes, your cholesterol a lot of times will go up when you're losing weight. It's still a good thing. 
So when you look at our cholesterol, but then look at it in correlation with our triglycerides and what is our glucose and what is our HDL and what is our remnant cholesterol or VLDL, I'm really, really excited and we can't wait to share that stuff with you. Now, if you haven't checked out Dave Feldman's website, go take a look at it. Uh, I'll leave a link for it down below. It's cholesterolcode.com. There is a lot of information on there. I, one of the things that you may want to take a look at is what he's putting us in the category of a lean mass hyperresponder. And uh, there's a lot more information. I don't even want to try to explain it. He's got a lot of information on there, but he also has some hacks on if you need to go to your doctor and get some blood work done and you don't want to freak them out with an over 300 cholesterol. He's got some hacks on how you can lower that for the blood test with doing some simple things. So go check out his website. Let's go ahead and take a look at this egg and see how it came out. How easy is it to peel? That's first of all, I hate peeling eggs. Now these are just cheap store-bought eggs. I didn't want to use our good eggs. I don't like the fact that the white is sticking on there as much. Usually I can peel them a lot easier. Could just be this egg though. Yeah, it definitely doesn't peel as easy. That's not a good thing. We may have to try another batch. Okay, now I'm just frustrated. Let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. That's what I care about. Is there green on the yolk? No, there is not. We're gonna eat the good part. Tastes really good. I just finished editing our day 12 vlog from the road back. Uh, we plan on premiering that later on tonight. And now I need to go to Costco to redeem our reward coupon. Also, I'm gonna look around and see if there's anything else that we need or if they have anything new when it comes to keto. And then I also have to go to Bed Bath & Beyond because my kitchen scale broke. I, we go through them. I don't know what happens to them, but I'm tired of buying the cheap like $10, or $15, $20 ones on Amazon, and then they don't seem to last. So I decided to splurge a little bit, and I got the OXO brand from Bed Bath & Beyond. They had it on Amazon, but it wasn't going to get here until Saturday. So I splurged uh, with the 20% off coupon. It cost me like $32, so I'm just going to go pick it up there. In the meantime... I'm trying to figure out what to do for dinner. Rachel wants to make some chicken wings, but I want to make sure that we have something when we both get home. So we have this leftover roast that we made the other day. I'm going to go ahead and stick it into the Anova Precision oven. I'm going to put it on sous vide mode, set it for a temperature of like 115 degrees. That will make it not cook anymore, just warm everything up. And I'm going to put it at 100% steam. Then when we get home, it should be ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and put the temperature probe in and this temperature probe actually measures right at the tip. So it doesn't have to go super deep. I like the probe to be like right in the middle. It doesn't really matter so long as everything fits into the oven and we're gonna go ahead and get everything started. So we're gonna go ahead and change this to sous vide mode. We're gonna drop it down to 115 degrees. I'll make sure I don't overcook it. And then we're gonna set the probe to 115 degrees. Again, you can do all of this on the app. I'm just trying to show it to you. Almost there. 100% humidity and we can go ahead and start it. Then we're gonna go ahead and put the roast in and connect the temperature probe. Here we go. The Costco is having some really good sales on appliances. For example, this food saver, if you like to buy bulk meat like we do, this is the one that we have. Uh, we have the old model, but it's pretty much the same thing. And it's $50 off. This is a great deal. Another good deal they have is this Cuisinart stick blender, $27.99. Uh, we have the same one and it works really, really well. Another good deal is this Gourmet Digital Air Fryer 7 quart, which is a fairly large size. 
and it's on sale for $39.99. We're gonna get some ground beef because you could never have enough ground beef. And we're gonna get a small turkey since uh, they're 89 cents a pound. I'm trying to find a small one that will fit on the rotisserie. It looks like this may be the smallest one they have. And since I forgot to defrost chicken wings and Rachel wants chicken tonight, we're gonna get one package of these that are not frozen. It's $2.99 a pound. So this package is $22.72. It's seven and a half pounds. And we did need some eggs. So I'm gonna get two dozen eggs here. It's $6 for two dozen. So if you like meat sticks or if you just wanna have something around, like maybe you're in a car and you're doing beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, these Archer Farms meat sticks are really, really good. It has really clean ingredients. I'll go over them here. Uh, it has grass-fed beef, water, salt, encapsulated lactic acids, cultured celery powder, which is celery powder and sea salt. And then we have garlic powder, red pepper, black pepper, cherry powder, coriander, onion powder, white pepper, ground nutmeg, parsley, colored beef collagen casing. The nutrition facts on them is 50 calories per stick, 3.5 grams of fat, four grams of protein, and zero total carbs. So these are really good. We love these and they're individually wrapped and they're selling for $14.99 for a bag of them. So they're demoing these right now. Please don't buy these. I love the fact it says coconut keto clusters. But when you look at the ingredients, you have organic coconut, pumpkin seeds, pecans, cane sugar, brown rice syrup, coconut butter, erythritol, flaxseed, sea salt, agave fiber, which is another form of sugar. It's 160 calories for a serving, which is only one ounce. 14 grams of fat, three grams of protein, eight total carbohydrates with three grams of dietary fiber, and it has three grams of added sugars. This is not keto, regardless of the fact that it says keto on the label. You're much better off buying these. We actually did a review of these. I'll leave a link for it right up over my head, but these are really good. It's got a good crunch to it. There's a variety of stuff in there and there's no added sugar. Plus, it's $14.69 for the big giant bag. I opened up two packages of wings. So there's a total of 23 wings here. That's 11 a piece and we can fight over one of them. And then what I did was I put it on this cookie cooling rack over a pan and I sprinkled a little bit of Redmond salt on top of them. And I'm gonna put that in the refrigerator to allow the salt and the air in the refrigerator to kind of dry out the skin a little bit. And when we're ready to eat them, we'll stick them into the oven. I have this pork belly that I have been curing to turn into bacon. Trying a different method, I'm using a wet cure method. So we're gonna go ahead and start the smoker and get this thing going. Rachel just got home and I started thinking, I made the Maria Emmerich bread earlier and I have six egg yolks left. So I'm gonna make a hollandaise sauce to pour over the roast. So I'm gonna make it in the Vitamix. Now this is a special container, it's called the Air Disc. It's specifically designed for adding air and volume to things and it works great for making a hollandaise sauce. So what I'm gonna do is in the bottom, I'm gonna put six egg yolks. I'm gonna put two tablespoons of lemon juice, a quarter of a teaspoon of paprika, a quarter of a teaspoon of Redmond Rail Salt, and then I have this garlicky gringo. I love this stuff. I'm gonna put like three or four drops in there. Normally I would use hot sauce, but I wanna try it with the garlicky gringo. So just a few drops in there. We're gonna go ahead and turn this on. Make sure it's all mixed. I'm gonna turn it up to eight. And then I'm gonna start pouring butter in very slowly. I have one and a half cups of melted butter. If it begins to thicken, you can actually start pouring the butter a little bit faster. This should take about a minute. You can see how it's thickening up. So I can start adding the butter a little bit faster. seconds. 
Let's go ahead and take a taste. Oh, look at that. Perfect hollandaise sauce. Oh, that is so good. Wow, that's amazing. Now you can make this in any kind of container or with any kind of blender that you would normally make a mayonnaise. The key is pouring the butter in nice and slow. So very similar to the way we make our butter mayonnaise, you're gonna do the same thing. You don't have to have this special air disc. It just works a little bit better and it's a little bit faster, but you can do it using a stick blender. You can do it using just a set of like hand mixer with beaters on there. You could even make it in a food processor. Just pour the butter in nice and slow. Let's go ahead and open this up. We will disconnect the probe. Pull out the beef, and then we're gonna go ahead and slice it. And you can see even the one solo piece has still got some pink in there. Of course it's gonna turn gray when you're cooking it, but the middle of this should not be gray at all. So you can see it's still pink in the middle. So it works. Good job, Anova Precision Oven. What do we have here, sir? We have the leftover roast. Yum. That I reheated in the Inova oven on sous vide mode at 100% humidity. So Perfect. it's still nice and pink in the middle. I'm really yeah. happy about that because that's the thing when you reheat beef, not always the greatest. It doesn't always come out good. You certainly can't microwave it. Forget that noise. No. It, be, it turns into just like all brown. So a lot of times we would take it and stick it into like a sous vide bag, but then I got to pull out the whole thing and then you get it in the bag. So this thing did it great. I left it in the glass container so I didn't even have to dirty another dish. Really? And then I um, made a Maria Emmerich bread and I had six egg yolks <gasps> left over. Is this some hollandaise? So I made you a hollandaise sauce oh, wow. in the Vitamix. I love hollandaise sauce. Got a couple little special ingredients in this one. Uh oh. Did you put like some liver and stuff? No, like I didn't put liver in good there. Good ingredients. I actually think it's the best hollandaise sauce I've ever made. <laughs> Pure buttery deliciousness. Oh my goodness. Mm. Want me to turn off the camera? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. So that is uh, six egg yolks with one and a half cups of butter. So that's, I actually, mm. I use a little bit less than one and a half cups. I used two and a half sticks. Oh my gracious. So that's one and a quarter a cup of butter. Um, but yeah. That is incredible. And then I added a little bit of paprika. Mm. and some red mineral salt. And then usually I put hot sauce in, but instead of hot sauce, I used the garlicky gringo, just a few drops of that. So it brings a little bit of heat, not too much, cause it's, that's not a very hot, hot sauce. Such a good flavor. But it flavor. brings in a nice garlic flavor without adding a whole bunch of garlic in there. Wow. So. That is crazy good. Yeah, you like that? Mm-hmm. Now I used the Vitamix air disc container, which is a specialty container. A lot of times you can get it pretty cheap on a road show at Costco, but you don't need the air disc. No. You can make it in a regular Vitamix. You can make it with a stick blender. What's the advantage of it? It's faster. Okay. Like the, it took 30, 30, 40 seconds for the whole thing. What Alexa, is, stop. What is the timer for? Uh, Maria Emmerich bread. Oh, okay. So I've got a bacon smoking on the oven, mm. on, on the smoker. And then I figure we can, this will be kind of like a starter because I haven't eaten today. I know you had a couple of eggs, but I'm sure you're mm -hmm. really hungry. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do some wings. I'm really glad that I um, ate this morning. Mm -hmm. I felt totally satiated all through the riding process today. So basically for the two weeks that we're doing like Christmas series, I have to write like all of the activities for mm -hmm. our younger age classes. And so... Usually that whole creative process, it's like, it reminds me of studying when I was in high school and college, I get just really noshy and that right. was my behavior before. So you're kind of, you know, having to unlearn, you know, what you do. Like, is there an activity that you tend to snack more with? For me, studying and writing is, is a snacky thing for me. Me, it's driving, and then if I'm working super late at night, like if I'm working at midnight, 1 a.m. on the computer, I just want something. So what I've started doing is changing that to 
having something to drink. Right. So I'll have like a water with some Redmond in it or even a Zevia, but, or even just plain water, but something so that every time I want a snack, I'm just drinking. I took Flip the Flask with me and had my Redmond Boost, which mm -hmm. I really am enjoying. The lemon lime especially is delicious. And then you packed me an extra coffee. Yep. So like you, I had something to occupy my mouth if that was what was needed, just like a sip here and there. Mm -hmm. And then um, I felt completely powered through. I have all but three activities done, which I just left the desk where it, it is. I'm so sorry. I shared the office with two other people and they know I'm like, I have to spread out right. and then clean up. So I promised uh, I will get there before everyone else does in the morning and be able to um, clean up the space. But Joe was like, dinner's almost ready. How fast can you come home? And when you are ready to eat, it's like, let's go. One thing about the coffee, you really didn't have a second coffee because if you didn't notice, your cup that you started with was a smaller cup. Mm. When we were sitting here recording this morning, but I didn't want you to feel deprived going to work without having coffee. So I gave you a smaller cup to start. I didn't even notice. And then filled up your Two Crazy Keto's travel mug. So in the end, you drank the same amount of coffee because I didn't make anything different. We still made 11 cups in the cup, in, you know, in the coffee maker and then split it between the two of us. I think having breakfast for me makes me feel like it's enough of an occasion. I yeah. think if sometimes if I don't eat food for breakfast, then I think that, you know, my coffee needs to be the size of a Pyrex bowl. Right. It doesn't, but I feel like I need something. So the fact that I had this great breakfast, I was like, all right, I did not even notice it. Yeah, I did speak to Dave Feldman today. I recorded the Are Zoom we call. Um, some of it, I really got a good explanation. Uh -huh. Now, the, I recorded the Zoom call from my own knowledge, not to share with you guys, because right. he's, he's basically explaining things as a friend. He's not a medical professional or anything like that. So we're not going to share the Zoom call. I recorded it so that I could go back and reference and, and listen to it, because on some areas, I'm more lost than when I started. Okay. But overall, uh, I have a good understanding of it, but before we share everything with you guys, I want you to watch the Zoom call, and I want to re-watch it. Right. So that, again, we don't share the wrong information. Right. Okay, oven's at 437 degrees with a timer set at 25 minutes. We have the steam completely off, and sous vide mode is off. And we have the top and the back heating element gone. So I have the chicken wings on a cookie cooling rack over a lined pan. That's just to collect the grease. And then we're gonna spray a little bit of avocado oil over the top of them to help them crisp up a little bit more. Okay, wings are done. We're gonna go ahead and take them out. Ooh, they look nice and crispy. And then we're gonna toss them in some butter with some Redmond's lemon pepper. So let's go ahead and just drop these right in here. Put a little bit of Redmond's in. And toss them. What are you laughing at? Somebody just sent me like a meme that said, Burger King be like 35 nuggets for $1.50. Them is definitely raccoon ankles. <laughs> oh my God. I know you're excited about premiering day 12. I am. But here's some wings. This is something to be excited about also. I want to see what you think. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Wow. So here's the thing. We usually sacrifice the moistness on the inside because we want the crunchiness on the outside. And, and this has got it both. This is moist and crunchy. I have two things though. I have more. I'll replace one of yours. I just want to try it. These are tiny because that's how we got them, but you could always just eat a couple more. Well, these are not the ones we bought that were frozen the other day because I forgot to defrost those. So what are these? I bought these at Costco today. It was like a package of them, $3 a pound. Okay. But they're much bigger. 
Yeah. When you put them in there. And obviously they shrink when you're cooking them. Oh, yeah. What I want to know is what is Buffalo Wild Wings using? That they are twice the size after cooking them. Mm. I, I don't know what they're doing. But, you know, it just shows you. Sometimes going to Buffalo Wild Wings on Tuesday, that's the better deal. I mean, people have commented, like, just buy your own wings because you don't know what they're frying them in. Well, that's why we go to Buffalo Wild Wings. We have an entire video on Buffalo Wild Wings. I'll leave a link up here. Uh, but Buffalo Wild Wings fries in beef tallow, which is why that's the only place we go. But when they have them buy one, get one free, you need a napkin. I need a napkin. And also, I got to go because we got a premiere. So, well, what I was just going to say is that Buffalo Wild Wings fly, fries in tallow, and that's why we go there. But the other thing is, is now I have to clean all of the chicken grease splatter off the that's inside true. of the oven. So that's another downside for cooking wings in your house in the oven. This place smells like a test kitchen. It is a test kitchen right now. I've got like three different recipes There's that I'm a attempting. a lot going on. Yeah, wait till Caleb comes into the kitchen to clean. He's going to kill me. I, yeah, I know. He's definitely going on strike. I was just looking and thinking like, mm. Especially considering the garbage disposal is still broken because I didn't have time today to change it out. I bought it. I just haven't changed it out. It, it's a pretty quick process, but I didn't feel like emptying out everything underneath the cabinet. <laughs> 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 so it's gonna smell and be terrible like both of them. I'll, I'll change it out tomorrow after work how were your chicken wings they were so stinking good perfectly crispy on the outside very moist on the inside right i i had to hose down afterwards you like them with the butter and the lemon i pepper. like with the butter but i mean they're juicy on the inside too so you're getting a good taste on the you know on the outside with right. the butter and the seasoning it's so strange though, not to have different sauces or rubs with a thousand ingredients in it, right? right. Like I thought in order to get the most flavor out of wings, mm -hmm. it's really all about the blue cheese dip and it's about right. like the, the really thick garlicky sauce or it has to be real hot or something. So this is new territory for me. As many wings as we've eaten, right. we haven't eaten them like this. Well, you can make your own sauce. If you like mild or medium or even hot ones, all it is is butter and Frank's Red Hot, yeah. but not the Red Hot wing sauce. Don't buy that yeah, stuff because that's made with canola oil. Buy Frank's Red Hot, and then you're going to add that to butter. So you melt some butter, and then the hotter you want them, the more Frank's you add in there. You can also use the garlicky gringo and do it that way and have that nice taste of like a garlic kind of hot sauce. Yeah. You can do it with almost anything. And if you want more dry rubs that don't have all the maltodextrin that you're going to get in the Buffalo Wild Wings one, use the pork and good. Yes. The pork and good sells their seasonings that they put on their pork rinds. There's they a lot sell of them in shaker bottles. Yeah. And they make a really good coating for wings. So what I like to do is I like to cook the wings ahead of time. Don't season them ahead of time. Just a little bit of salt because that will help dry out the skin. And then when you're done, that's when you're going to toss them. And you don't even need to add, if you're going to do the, the dry rubs, you don't need to add anything in there because there's still a lot of like oil on the chicken skin and that is wet enough so that it'll you know pick up all those different seasonings and stuff we need to do like the dill pickle one because i really in like salt and vinegar that they had yeah because it, it like that was really good it's just that the lemon pepper was so good right. i just i don't know just well keep... you've always liked the lemon pepper from buffalo wild wings it was like your favorite Only yeah here there's no maltodextrin it's literally just a lemon pepper seasoning from Redmond and we know Redmond and there's no bad ingredients or anything in there. It's kind of awesome, really, just being able to trust the ingredients and know tomorrow I'm not gonna feel terrible. It's Hopefully kind of I won't good. feel terrible. I mean we're making this is the second time we're having wings, or really third time we're having wings. The other two times we didn't have any inflammation. Nothing like having that chicken. Like I know we want to have chicken, but after that, it took me two days to recover from that chicken. I think chicken is going to have to be a side dish yeah, for me. Or, or once in a while kind of thing. Like when we would go to like a Texas de Brazil, you just kind of naturally want to save room on your plate for all the beef because you know that that is the more expensive cut of meat. So, right. we, so I'm just shopping, you know, the, the what's the best cut. 
and right. just saving stomach room while at the restaurant. And so you you taste the chicken, but that's not the one that I'm like, yeah, bring the chicken around 50 more times because chicken. So right. I feel like that's kind of the the mindset I'm going to bring at home. Whereas normally I would have leaned on chicken. Right. But I think I'm turning into a beef and baker. Well, bacon girl. We leaned on chicken for two reasons. Number one, it's very inexpensive. And number two, it's very lean. And we had developed somehow this fear of eating anything that has fat in it. I don't know where it came from because when we started on keto, we were all about the fat. And then somewhere, once we got to the weight we wanted to be, we just developed this mindset of like, okay, I can't have fat anymore. And guess what? The weight started coming on because all of a sudden we were eating lean. We were under eating our calories because we were eating so lean. And, you know, our body wasn't getting enough fat for nutrition. Your body does need to consume some fat. Yes, we're trying to lose fat. And there's that happy medium, which is what's so great about one-to-one. -one. But if you under-eat your fat too much, then you can't absorb all of the vitamins and the nutrients out of your food. I think that sometimes when you don't like what's going on in the scale, you're just grabbing for everything and anything. Yeah. Like, you're it's just... what what What's going to change it? And the stress adds problems, right? right. Like the panic right. is going to make it more difficult for you to lose weight and to stay on track because you're, you've got yourself in a frenzy. And, right. and I definitely just lived in a frenzy and was like, what can we do? I will try anything. If you tell me that, like, if you only wear the color orange, like you will lose weight. Like the scale will start moving. I'd be like, orange it is. Let's right. go buy it. It's a never ending cycle because you get to this point where you're like, I don't know what to do. So now you start stressing. Well, stress releases cortisol. And the next thing you know, you're in this cycle of no matter what you do, because you're stressing about it. It's getting worse. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And then you're looking in all these different directions. And I think that's one of the things that beef, bacon, and egg, you know, has done for us. Beef, bacon, butter, and egg. Uh, can't leave out the butter. Um, is it, it kind of got us to this point where we're like, huh. There, there's no other option. Like I was just reading some comments and answering comments while you were premiering the video. And there are several comments of, did you check your glucose or did you check your ketones while you were doing beef, butter, bacon, and egg? And the answer is no. We checked, we checked our glucose at our starting, like when we first started it by having blood work done. Mine was a 90. I don't remember what yours was. It was like in the mid eighties yeah. or something like that. And then, you know, we are going to come out later on this week with our blood work video, but I can tell you that my glucose at the end of it was also a 90, or I think it was a 92, and yours was right in the same range. But if you're only eating beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, you're essentially eating zero carb, or as close to zero carb as you can get, because there are carbs in eggs, there is a carb in coffee, so you're not eating a tremendous amount of carbs, which means your body has to be fueling on fat, both your dietary fat and your body fat. It doesn't have any other options. So there's no reason for me to check my ketones because it doesn't matter because I know my body is being fueled on fat. If I would have checked them, I'm gonna tell you, my ketones were probably still around a 0.4 or a 0.5 because I've been doing this so long. And the way we're eating, I'm not expecting really high ketones, but really high ketones does not equate to more you know, weight loss, which we've talked about that a lot before. Same thing with the glucose. I'm not really concerned about my glucose if I'm not eating any carbs or sugar. I'm just not concerned about it. May You could possibly have a little bit higher glucose. That's your body creating it because it needs it. It's going to make it whether you eat something or not if it needs it. And there are certain cells that need glucose. What was really nice for that whole time that we were doing BBB and E is it gave us permission to be like, don't look at it. Right. Like, don't think about it. Don't be checking all of those things, the scale, the all of the numbers, all of it. If, if we weren't on that particular challenge, I think it would have added a layer of frustration to right. be like, is it working? Is it working with like hovering over numbers across that 44 days? Right. For these 44 days, there was no hovering over numbers. Trust the process. You're just having to trust the process. The other thing that I was thinking was, I'm so thankful for the keto community because no matter what's going on in, in this home, 
even if we as a couple are in one of those frenzies and you just, you go through that. Like we've been confident keto for, right. for a couple of years now. And then after, you know, the whole 2020 gain weight, like don't know what to do right. and can't stop stressing out. You're, you're just, Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And we're feeding off of each other's frenzy. But because there is a keto community, you know, we can benefit from other voices like Dr. Barry, right. who is calm in his home, right? Right. He's not living in this home where we're ah, like, what do we do? And I feel like that that's a lot of the keto community. I, I hope that we can be like that for somebody else who's maybe in a different season of life. And maybe, you know, you're having some stress and we can speak some hope and peace into your life the way that Dr. Barry spoke into to ours because just having an outside person outside of our home say it's going to be okay that was healing that that began the healing the right. thought the prospect that there was hope because you know we had worked ourselves into a thought of like is there no hope like is it never going to get any better yeah well that is going to be the end of I believe this is day 15 wow. of the road back. We forgot to say what it was at the beginning of the day, but it is day 15 because this is a new week. We started on a Tuesday. So if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.